Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are gonna be vacuum forming. Before I get this video started, there's gonna be a lot of talking in this video. I'm trying to give as much information as possible for those who are still getting into vacuum forming or still new to it, or maybe if you have knowledge and you just didn't know a few things about the whole process or not. So if you don't wanna hear me talking and explaining a lot of things, you can just skip to right here and fast forward to the actual vacuum forming process. About three years ago, I made my very first vacuum forming video which at the very moment is at 34,000 views, which I'm surprised because anything over 300 views is a lot to me. So I really appreciate those who've been watching over the years in all my videos. And for all the new subscribers who are looking to subscribe to me and just following my work and my videos, I really appreciate it. I can provide really good content for you guys in the future. And to get started, I'm gonna go over just a few things on the actual process and going over the materials before we get started here. What I'm vacuum forming in today's video is this rabbit splicer from the video game Bioshock, which is one of my favorite video games of all time. If you haven't played the game, you're really missing out and you should check it out. It's really awesome. Some people like to get the term buck, B-U-C-K, and the word mold confused a lot. They are two complete different things. This is a mold and this is a negative mold and this is a positive buck. This negative mold is how I got this positive buck. Without this buck, I would not be able to make a vacuum formed plastic copy. If you know anything about vacuum forming, you need to have a very strong material so it can withstand the temperature and the pressure of your vacuum former. The product I like to use on all my vacuum forming bucks is a material called TC1630 and it's by a company called BJB Enterprises. I will have a link down below in the description. And if you have any questions about their materials or about their products or any background information on certain applications you need it for, you can contact a worker by the name of Haley. She's super sweet, super kind, and she'd be able to answer all your questions. There's a few reasons why I like using this product. The number one reason is it has a high temperature rating. If you're not familiar with the whole process, the plastic is getting heated up by heat heating elements and that plastic if you were to point a temperature gun at it can go from 80 degrees all the way up to over 100 degrees and if you're using a material that is not meant for vacuum forming for example if you are using a material that has a temperature rating of let's say 50 degrees and you were to put that plastic sheet over it it could damage your buck or soften it up and just like collapse on itself just from the vacuum pressure alone. Since it's been three years since my last vacuum forming video, I did about three upgrades on my machine. And I'm just gonna give you guys a quick rundown on what I did and hopefully that helps you out for those who have the same vacuum setup and former setup as I do. And then we can finally get started on the actual vacuum forming process. So the first upgrade I did on this, I installed my switch finally into the actual metal with this vacuum former. What I did was get a Dremel, cut out a square hole, and make sure to, if you're ever drilling or cutting into metal, make sure you dip it in oil because it is gonna get very hot just because of the friction in the middle. It's kind of a pain trying to cut a perfect square hole, but I think I got it and it fit in there perfect. And once that was done, I just drilled a hole in the back to fish all the wires through to the switch here and it works perfectly on and off and when this vacuum former goes down with my hand, I can just flick it like that. And the last time you saw my vacuum forming video, I had tape holding the switch on here. It did the job at that time. Now it's actually inside the former and it looks a lot cleaner than the last time you seen it. The second upgrade I did to my vacuum former setup was add this oil mist filter right here to my vacuum pump setup. When I first bought this vacuum pump, it never came with an oil mist filter for whatever reason. Later down the line, until recently, I finally found a filter for this vacuum pump. And this pump it is discontinued, so it was really hard trying to find the oil mist filter for this. I finally found a supplier that had a few of them on hand. 
So what I did was order two of them, that way I have a backup just in case. And it's really good to have an oil mist filter, that way you can filter out any chemicals coming out of the air from you know, the vacuum pump itself when it's running. And last but not least, the third upgrade I did on this vacuum forming machine was I upgraded the stainless steel table to a stainless steel table that has wheels on it. So it's pretty much like a cart. The reason I did that is just because Later on in the future, I don't know if I'll have any problems with the machine, but if I ever have to move it, I don't have to have another person pick up one side and just move it just so I can change out something on here. Even though this machine is pretty basic, there's really no maintenance to it. All I have to do is just fill up the pump with oil and that's pretty much it. But it's good to have this on wheels just because I can just move it around and it's easy to move where it's not a two person thing to pick it up and move it all over the place. And if I wanted to, I can just move it outside of the house if I ever need to move it anywhere if I wanted to. Here is what the final pull looks like once I took it off the vacuum former. I got a little bit of webbing, which is not a big deal. I was trying to balance the camera and this at the same time, so I, I was jumping back and forth. So, so this is one of the reasons why it happened. Actually, it's a good thing just because I can show you guys the problems in vacuum forming as well. Webbing occurs when the plastic droops and gets heated a little bit too much and it creates a crease in the plastic from the suction. Sometimes this happens when you have a complicated piece or sometimes when it, the plastic is really hot and that is what happens to the plastic. But overall, the plastic pull came out really well. A little bit of creasing here. It's really not affecting the mask overall just because I get to trim all of this out. If you have a little bit of creasing like that, you can also fix that with a heat gun depending how bad the webbing is. What I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna trim this up a little bit and give you a good general idea of what I mean. Here's the rabbit splicer all trimmed up a bit. All I did was trim out the edges. I still have to trim out this metal section and the eyes, but that's pretty simple. This mask came out flawless. All I had to do was uh, get a heat gun, go over it a little bit, and once it got soft, I just pinched the edges a little bit, and all that webbing is gone. Nothing major. If you have webbing going all the way up to the face or in, on your piece at all, then that might be a big issue because I don't think you can fix like hardcore creases like that. But overall, if it's something small, you can fix that easily. If you guys enjoyed this video as much as I did, hit that like button, subscribe, hit the notifications. I will have more content for you guys in the future. And who knows, maybe I'll be vacuum forming some other cool stuff. And also, if you get this reference on my shirt, then you are awesome. And if you would like to pick up the shirt, you can check out my buddy, jdfstudios.com, and he can hook you up with a cool shirt like this. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care. Let you be.